The great state of Nevada is one of the loneliest places in all of America. Nevada is a seriously empty state, the kind of place a tumbleweed might roll for a very long time before finding so much as a great lost horned sheep to cuddle up to. Here's the thing, though. It's all about distribution. It's about the overall size of the state and the number of people in it. If you spread around equally all of the 2.7 million hardy souls who live in Nevada, you'd have about 24 people in each square mile, enough to say, hey there, hi there, hello there. But the people are not spread around evenly in Nevada. They're bunched up. In huge swaths of the state, there's basically nobody. Look at this map. You see all the dark green on this map? Dark green stands for every square mile that has an average population of less than one. Tumbleweed territory. If you want to find people in Nevada, you have to avoid the dark green parts, which means, look, you have to go down there to the corner. You have to go to the southeast corner of the state, to Clark County. Roughly three out of every four people who live in that state live in that one little corner county. And frankly, even a lot of Clark County is empty, too. But the county is centered on Las Vegas, where the lights are bright enough to see so you don't bump around in the dark while looking for a tumbleweed or a sheep to cuddle up to. So in, in, in terms of acreage, Nevada has plenty of it, right? In terms of people, though, in terms of politics, which are associated with people, Nevada really mostly just has this one place. It has Clark County down in the corner of the state. And in terms of a Republican Party, that little corner of the state, Clark County, Nevada, has this. A billboard proclaiming the new Clark County Republican Party, where George Bush begat Mitt Romney, question mark, and Ronald Reagan gave the world the Ron Paul exclamation point. When this freedom of expression from Republicans in the populated part of swing state Nevada made some national headlines this month, the official Clark County Republican Party decided to try to distance itself from the anti-Mitt Romney billboard, saying the billboard was not the party's per se, It belonged to a member of the party's executive board. Uh, In their own defense, they say they're not even that concerned with federal elections, even if they don't like Mitt Romney much. Presumably federal elections include the presidential one this fall that the National Republican Party is trying to win, in part using Nevada's electoral votes. If the question is whether or not Clark County Republicans in Nevada have been taken over by the Ron Paul movement, the answer is yes. Does that matter to national Republicans who really sorely, truly would like to elect Mitt Romney and who would like Nevada's help in doing that, please? Well, you can ask that question about Iowa, too. Ron Paul just won the majority of Iowa's delegates at the convention there this weekend. There will be 25 delegates plus superdelegates sent to the National Republican Convention from the great state of Iowa. And of those 25, 21 are Ron Paul delegates. So who won Iowa in the Republican presidential nominating race in 2012? Ron Paul won Iowa. And Ron Paul also won Iowa going forward beyond this year. In addition to the convention delegates, the new executive director of the Iowa Republican Party is a Ron Paul guy. It's deep ties to Ron Paul. Also, the party's new organizational director, the person in charge of Iowa Republicans' presence in the counties in this election year, also a Ron Paul guy, a backer of Ron Paul. And hey, what's going on up there in Alaska? Look, in April, Ron Paul backers elected one of their own as the new party chairman in Alaska. In May, following month, faced with a full-on Ron Paul revolution in the making up in Alaska, the outgoing chair of the party, who had been ousted by the Ron Paul guy, he urged Alaska Republicans to boycott the state Republican Party convention so they could deny Ron Paul folks a quorum, so they couldn't change the rules to replace the old line chairman right now before November, so the new Ron Paul Alaska Republican Party couldn't maybe take away Mitt Romney's delegates for Alaska and send Ron Paul delegates to the national convention instead. In an effort to avoid that scenario, the outgoing chairman in Alaska urged the state's Republicans to not show up at their own convention, to go fishing instead. Literally, he told them to go fishing instead. I would encourage all of you to uh, make that day useful, because I understand that many people from across the state are not planning to be there. I would encourage you to work on things that are family-related or go fishing. Thank you very much. Avoid the state convention, go fishing. 
That's what the Alaska Republican chairman told the Alaska Republican Party. And it worked. Uh, This month, Alaska Republicans largely stayed away from their convention. So the Ron Paul revolution never got the quorum they needed. And in this presidential election year, the new Ron Paul dominated Alaska Republican Party can't take over early. They couldn't hold this convention they had planned on holding. The Ron Paul crowd went away mad in Alaska, some of them saying they had spent hundreds of dollars traveling to that event. Beyond Clark County, Nevada, and Iowa, and Alaska, it should also be noted that Ron Paul won a majority of the delegates for the whole state in the state of Nevada, and in the state of Iowa, and in the state of Maine, and in the state of Minnesota, and maybe in Louisiana. We don't have a final result yet for Louisiana. So even as Mitt Romney seeks to consolidate the Republican Party faithful, right, and steam toward the November election, the Ron Paul movement has been seizing the Republican Party apparatus at the state level. As of today, Ron Paul supporters are not only not falling in line on Mitt Romney, they are suing in federal court. More than 100 delegates to the Republican National Convention are suing the Republican National Committee Chairman, Reince Priebus, and the state Republican parties, all of them, suing in that court's jurisdiction and the chairs of those state parties. They're suing all of them. The delegates allege that the Republican establishment improperly helped Mitt Romney in his fight to win the nomination. They're asking a judge whether they, as delegates, will be, quote, free to vote their conscience at the National Convention, by which I think they mean, will they be free to vote for Ron Paul? Today, Dr. Paul told CNN that he has neither encouraged that lawsuit, nor will he tell his supporters to knock it off. He says he's in no way ready to endorse Mitt Romney because he says more debate is good. Now, oddly, the Republican National Committee has responded to this lawsuit both by saying that it is frivolous and by saying it needs a serious response, which is a weird pair of answers. At this stage of the campaign, even in states Mitt Romney did not win, Republicans are supposed to be standing up for the nominee, right? Right not suing for the right to support somebody else. Does the Republican Party, particularly as a collection of state parties, does the Republican Party matter? Does the institution matter? Does it matter if a bunch of the state Republican parties are emphatically not for Mitt Romney and they instead are for Ron Paul? Now, in 2012, in this election year, does the actual machine that is the Republican Party function in a way that's going to make a difference in the presidential election? I will tell you that from inside National Republican Party headquarters, we are told tonight that top Republican Party officials are, in fact, worried about the way this is playing out and will play out. A top Republican official telling us tonight that the worries are about the ramifications for the 2012 elections, but also for beyond. Joining us now is Steve Schmidt, Republican strategist, notably with the McCain-Palin ticket in 2008, and also now an MSNBC contributor. Steve, thank you for taking one on. Thanks for taking this on. Thanks for being here. You bet. Good to see you, Rachel. So does the party itself matter for an election in terms of having strong state parties to turn out the vote and fundraise for the nominee and deal with publicity and structure and stuff? Do the parties matter at the state level or do you just get around that now with outside groups? It's a complicated question. And to a large degree, the outside groups have destabilized some of the chief functions of the parties on the get out the vote stuff. A lot of this will take place through these third party groups. Now, when you're running a presidential campaign or you're in the midterm elections and you're working from Washington, you want to be able to work with functional state parties. The fact that there are dysfunctional and uncooperative state parties is nothing new to the people who run both parties. And so this is an issue that, you know, the, the, the Romney campaign and the Republican National Committee will have to work around, you know, but of course, uh, the party has rules and those rules are designed uh, as you move into the national convention to make it very, very difficult for insurgent state parties to go in there and to cause a lot of mischief and to disrupt the flow of the convention. It, so at the end of the day, it's probably not a big deal, but it's a hassle to have to deal with. If you were an insurgent in the Republican Party, if you if you had a sort of long term ideological view the way that I think the Ron Paul folks do, I don't mean that in a critical way. I just think that's the way they're oriented. And if you were advising them and you could choose between winning a state party chairmanship and winning some sort of platform plank at the national convention, which would you pick? Which would actually have more influence on the direction of the party and the goals of your movement? I'm not sure that either have a particularly big influence on the on the direction of the party. So, for example, when you have a state chairman who 
takes over a state party and the state party is dysfunctional, it's no longer relevant to the political goals of, of, of electing a majority, whether that's on the Democratic side or the Republican side. You know, typically what you see is something that's taken place in California, for example, where, you know, the Republican parties become a small ideological clubhouse, uh, totally faded to irrelevance, where different factions gather twice every year to pass resolutions denouncing the other faction. And it's a, it's, it's a small clubhouse where people are relevant in the sphere of that small clubhouse, but no longer relevant in terms of being able to shape the outcome of an election to recruit candidates, to raise money, to register voters. And that's the direction these dysfunctional parties will, will go. And, of course, the money will flow to places where it's productively put to use, whether that's outside groups or whether that's cooperative county parties. And the people on a presidential campaign, they have to deal with it. They have to work around with it. Sometimes there are legal issues involved with it. They get lawyers involved. Sometimes suits are filed. You know, but at the end of the day, all of this stuff is usually being able to be worked around. I got to say, it is. I, I don't disagree. You know this stuff better than I do, having worked through it. But I got to say, it's got to be humbling to sort of political pros to hear like, yeah, actually, the party doesn't matter at all. <laughs> the party matters if it's going to work well and you want to use it as a place to work from. But if, it's, if, if you don't function at all, other people will get the work done. It's got to be kind of a humbling thing for the pros in this field. Well, look, and capital goes to where it's welcome. People in, 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 not, in, in neither party want to want to donate money where where it's going to be wasted, where it's not going to have any productive function. So these state parties who become dysfunctional that get out of the business of trying to support the nominee, trying to help elect them, they usually wind up starved for funds, and there's usually a new chairman in the next year or two. Steve Schmidt, Republican political and public affairs strategist and an MSNBC contributor and a guy who lives in Nevada who is neither a tumbleweed nor a bighorn sheep. Uh, Steve, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Good to see you, Rachel. All right. Uh, Massachusetts Senator Scott Brown uh, gets weird again in the exact same way that he got weird before. That's next.